Now let us look into the different components of IoT. Now we understand what IoT is and why is it so important in the modern world. Hence it is only fair for us to understand what are the different basic components of IoT. The basic components of IoT are as follows. Number one, sensors and devices. The term sensors itself indicates sensing. The, thus the primary task of a sensor is to sense its environment, detect changes or events and send the sensed information to the electronic devices, mostly a computer processor. A sensor is always used in combination with other devices. Now, multiple sensors sensing various parameters can be put together in a device in order to achieve a broader application. But that does not mean that a device is a sensor in itself. For example, the smartphones we use today are devices which are capable of doing multiple functions other than just sensing the environment, but it has many sensors installed in it which helps it to perform all its functions. So, in a nutshell, the function of this component and the first step in IoT is collection of data from the environment. Number two is connectivity. As the term suggests, this component is all about making online connections. Now, what are these connections? As IoT involves data collection and sharing via the internet, it needs a platform to store the data collected. A cloud is a platform to achieve this particular purpose. By definition, the cloud refers to servers that are accessed over the internet and the software and the databases that run on those servers. Cloud servers are located in data centers all around the world. By using cloud computing, users and companies don't have to manage physical servers themselves or run software applications on their own machines. The connectivity component helps the devices slash sensors to connect to the cloud and send the data over there. Different methods can be used to achieve this. They can be cellular, satellite, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, low power wide area networks, connecting via a gateway or a router, or directly connecting to the internet via the ethernet. Now every option mentioned above has its own set of pros and cons with respect to the power consumption, bandwidth and range. Therefore, the selection of either method varies from application to application. So in a nutshell, this component of IoT looks after the getting the data which is already collected by the first component to the cloud. The next component is data processing. This component takes in the data which is on the cloud and then processes it. Now the processing varies from application to application itself. The processing is done via the software dedicated to serve that purpose. So this component in a way acts like the brain of an IoT system where the data which is collected is being processed and, in our, and, and processed in a way so as to achieve the desired application. Now based on the processed data, it will let the user interface that is the next component of IoT to know the information on what has to be done and what action has to be taken up next. This brings us to the last component of IoT that is the user interface. Finally, the processed information is made useful to the user. This can happen in multiple ways depending upon application deployed. For example, let's say after sensing a temperature spike, there can be a notification sent to the user's device requesting him or her to take actions in order to cool down the temperature of the device or the room that the sensor is measuring. Now the user can either just have an interface which allows him or her to proactively monitor on the system or an interface which allows him or her to perform an action and affect the system. Now this also depends upon the kind of application that is being considered. 